Hello sports fans and welcome. Welcome to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. And this is episode, uh, I think it's 152. Yeah, it is 152. You know, I, I, you know, it's like, I, you know how it is. You know, Guru forgets things and remembers things. But you know what? I tell you what, I got something special for you guys. I did promise you last week that I was going to bring in a special guest. And I finally got my special guest together. And first of all, I want to give her the special treatment, the intro, or the the the, the clapping. The, oh, I gotta give it give it up for the one, the only. I talk about her all the time, Miss Mary Mac of the Mary Mac Ask Mary Mac, the Mary Mac podcast. I, I know I'm so excited. Can you just take it away, Mary? I, I'm I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you. I am so grateful for all of your audience who've learned about me through you over a number of years now, right? Yeah, I'm that coming up on to you. We've grown our friendship. Yeah. Yep, we've yeah. grown our friendship. And for those of you who may not know who I am, I, I have a podcast called The Mary Mac Show. And it's weekly. It comes out on Sunday in the middle of the night. So when you wake up on Sunday morning, you can listen to it. And if you will subscribe to it, that would be just great. And I'd love to hear what you think of it. And my podcast, unlike Gurus, that's mostly on sports, mine is about grief. And it's about handling the death of a loved one. And we also talk about end-of-life issues. So there are individuals out there who are reaching the end of their life. They know that they're ill, and they may not recover. We also talk about how you deal with that. Like, how do you speak to people about impending death? It's not easy. Most of us don't even want to touch this subject. It can be very taboo, not just in the, in the States, but all over the world. People don't want to talk about death and dying. It's it's uh, tacky sometimes. It's hard. It's messy. Grief is messy. You know, everybody thinks that you're going to learn how to grieve a loved one's death and you're going to go from point A to point B just like if you went on a trip, on a you know, road trip. But life doesn't work like that. And grief doesn't work that way. And unfortunately, if you've never, um, or fortunately, I should say, if you've never had to experience the death of a loved one yet in your life, count yourself blessed. Because when this does occur to you, and the only way it will not occur in your life, is when you die first. That's the only way that you will never encounter the death of a loved one and the pain that comes with it. And so I wanted to talk today about a few things, but mostly about how grief is a milestone in your life. Some of us are burdened with it very young. We might lose a parent when we're a kid. We might lose a sibling when we're a kid. We, many of us, lose our grandparents when we're children. So, as you move forward in life, this is something that we're all going to have to deal with. Mm. And it's not, it's not fun at all. It makes you really examine what's important in life. You know, sometimes people uh, try to push it under the carpet or under the rug, as they say, and they act like they're just fine. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm not crying. I'm not upset. It's someone important in my life, but I'm fine. And you can try to fib yourself into believing that that's the case. But unfortunately, as life goes on, it's going to come back to you in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So you can try to stuff it under the rug, 
But what happens usually is when you have another chaos in your life, and that doesn't have to be the death of a second person, it could be a divorce, it could be the loss of a job, it could be an you're in a car accident and now you have great injury that you need to recuperate from. It can be many things, many losses in life, and that may spur the original grief of the first person who died in your life. So I would encourage you that when you are encountering the first death of your life, maybe it's a few down the road that are really impactful, somebody who's really close to you, it wouldn't be, you know, your boss's mother who died because you had no relationship with her. You go to the funeral out of respect, and that's lovely. You send a card, you send flowers, but ultimately, it doesn't affect you. I'm talking about the most important people in your life who you never anticipated that they'd go before you, or you never anticipated they'd go before you so soon. And so, when we look back on our life, we're going to realize that it was tough. Grief is tough. It's not an easy thing to go through. And a lot of times, it's sudden. So there's so many different ways that people die. Do you realize that over 60 million people die each year in this world. 60 million. Wow. In all different ways. And in the United States alone, we bury 2.4 to 2.5 million people a year in this country. And so all of those people who are now grieving those 60 million deaths, how many would that be, do you think? Double? Is it 120 million people? Maybe there's five people that are grieving the average death. Is that 300 million people who are grieving? Everywhere? Some have help, some have no help. Some have people who care about them that'll walk them through it. Some have absolutely nobody. And I always think of the people who are alone. I really do, because those are the ones who have the most difficult time because they're so alone and on my podcast this weekend we talk about the silence is deafening and that's so important because there are so many people out there who don't have anyone anymore what if it was a widow who's in her 80s and she only had her husband living with her now he's gone or you have a parent who had a child living with them and this child died unexpectedly now they're living alone. There are so many individuals who are grieving alone, and we need to be there for them, if we can, in some way. And so I would encourage you, it's important that you get help, and that you show love to those who need it. And you can go to my website, www.marymac.com info, and at the top of the page in the tabs you'll see different resources for you and if you need to speak to someone especially if you're feeling really distraught I want you in the United States to call the number 988 and that's a hotline and that hotline people are really wonderful they help you, they listen to you, they get you through those really difficult times where you feel like you're alone. And there are other crisis lines on my website for um, crisis centers all around the world. You'll find them off of my website at the top. Look for crisis hotlines. And there is another tab that'll give you all the support groups that are around the country and some overseas and those support groups are really important you can call them up find out if they have a chapter locally for your exact type of grief so if you've had a miscarriage or a stillbirth you will look in that section if you've had somebody who you've lost to suicide or homicide if you're widowed 
if you're dealing with cancer. There are so many different organizations that are there to help you and get you support that you need. And you don't have to tell your family about this. You just go and make a phone call and find out what's available and go by yourself if you feel, you know, that you don't want to share this with everyone. Remember, uh, everyone grieves in a different way and in a different timing. Mm-hmm. And that's very important to know because there's no set way to do this. There's just no set way to do this. And you're going to carve out your path in your timing with the people who support you. So I wanted you to know those things. Wow. You know, this is one of the reasons why I wanted you on my podcast because um, I wanted, you know, if you guys know that I come on here every single week and um, I I suffer from PTSD. And um, if you don't know my whole story, when I was in the United States Navy, I witnessed a very, very traumatic uh, situation in Beirut, Lebanon. And I still to this day suffer from PTSD and I want you guys to know that you know it's hard the struggle is hard but we have people like Mary Mac that will come on and talk to you and you know uplift you and and give you avenues that you can use to not go through all this alone and this is one of the reasons why I wanted you know to have this conversation right now because there's a lot of things that's going on in this world a lot of things that people can't really understand. A lot of things that are just really traumatic. And some people need an outlet. And like I said, I think I found the best, the authority on how to get things into perspective and how to keep things together. And this is why I have Miss Mary back here today. I wanted to ask you, Mary, what do you feel is the uh, one of the biggest things that people can do to overcome these things other than you know just trying to battle it alone trying to deal with it alone what is your what is your what is your thoughts on that okay there's a few things that I've learned over the years that have helped me and others that I've worked with um, tremendously one of those things is called the emotional freedom technique and this is also called tapping, tapping or mm-hmm. EFT. And what's so wonderful about that is you're tapping on the meridian lines of your body. So you're tapping your head, you're tapping your, your eyebrows, mm-hmm. you're tapping the side of your eyes, underneath, under your nose, under your chin, and then down here, your collarbone and the side. Excuse me. That's okay. <laughs> and the side of your arm. And there are many YouTube videos on that um, exact subject. And what you do is you are actually going to say um, a series of words, a series of sentences. And these practitioners who do EFT that you find online, um, you can go watch their YouTube videos Mm -hmm. and become familiar with how they do this. And there, if you put EFT at the top of YouTube and then you put what you're dealing with, so maybe you're dealing with PTSD, you're dealing with anxiety, you're dealing with grief, you're dealing, you could put loss, you could say death of a baby, and there will be someone who does EFT that will go through the process with you. And you just follow them, just follow them. The other thing that, and that is very, it helps you to decrease the level of pain that you're in emotionally. It's an outstanding resource. The next thing is, there is a small little yellow bottle, and it's on my website. You can go see the picture of it at the bottom of my website. It's called Box Rescue Remedy, and it's a homeopathic homeopathic drops. Now, just be aware, it does have alcohol in it, so if that's a thing for you, be aware. And these drops, you take the little vial. The box is yellow. It's about yay big. And you drop a few under your tongue, and it will help calm you. 
It was phenomenal. And then a few weeks ago, I had Dana Ullman on my show. He is a practitioner, um, one of the gurus. Talk about gurus, another guru. <laughs> All the gurus. <laughs> His name is Dana Ullman, and he's out of California, and he is a one of the premier practitioners of homeopathic medicine. Now, homeopathic medicine is not like prescription medicine at all. Mm -hmm. It's the antithesis of that. And there are so many different remedies that you can take that will help you through the grieving process. And if you go to my episode, on, it's on YouTube, you can watch our interview, and it's also on the MaryMaxShow.com audio. And uh, I think it was episode 165, yeah. and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is an hour-long episode that you will be so grateful you listen to, because he explains what homeopathy is, and he is available for consultations if you'd like that, but it's really important to learn the different remedies that work best for grief. So those three things are my go-to's when I'm dealing with something very severe. Mm -hmm. And we also talked about, he and I, how there's upward of 44 men and women in the military who are taking their own life every day. Mm -hmm. And that is unacceptable in my mind because they're doing their best um, <laughs> they're doing their best mm -hmm. um, to deal with this and they really need a lot more help not just from the hotlines but also with homeopathy there's a remedy called Orem and Orem is excellent for suicidal tendencies mm -hmm. now you know that that is probably like I said I watched that episode that, that episode was very very powerful and I really really enjoyed it and like I said usually I usually uh, listen to the Mary Mac show every Monday and like I said Mary Mac Mondays is probably one of my favorite parts of the week I tell you what we're going to do Mary we're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back and then we're going to you know and like I said, I'm really deep into this, so I want everybody out there to know that, hey, look, this is something really deep, and I want you guys to really, you know, sit back and pay attention. That's why I haven't said anything, because like I said, my guest is very, very good, and I want you guys to know that, hey, look, we got something special for you. You guys take care. I will be right back, and Mary, do you have another segment in you? Yes. All right. We'll, um, I'll be right back. You guys hang loose. We will be back with episode 152 of the Guru Talker Sports Podcast with my very special guest, Miss Mary Mack of the Mary Mack Show on Grief. We'll be right back. Hang tight. You're listening to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 152 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. And like I said, I have a very, very special guest with me today. Miss Mary Mack of the Mary Mack Show on Grief. Am I saying it right? It's the Mary Mack Show. It's the Mary Mack Show. And you got to go to our website. It's called Grief Authority. And yes. that's where you see all the... Uh, very very interesting stuff and like I said we were sitting here we were talking and um I, like I said I'm just gonna be quiet because Mary's got another segment and um I just let her go through and you know like I said feel free to just take the floor it's on you Mary. Okay. you got it well one of, the, one of the things I really want to discuss today is homicide and in the United States at least we are seeing a significant increase in homicide. It doesn't just have to be gun violence. You know, it could be arson, right? Mm -hmm. Burning down built people, buildings with people in them. Yeah. Um, it could be any kind of homicide 
my things. Like up in New York, we've been seeing people who just like go up to somebody and just stamp them. I mean, this is like craziness. We've never had, uh, you know, a society where people are so violent, you know, and we don't know where this is all coming from. Is it coming from because they're desperate? Is it a financial? You know, what's the baseline? Where is this coming from? Um, I don't have those answers, but when you start seeing, you know, videos where people just go up and start bashing each other, throwing them in front of subways, I mean, this is like craziness. So, many years ago, um, when I was my first marriage, um, my right before I was getting uh, married, I was engaged to be married, I had sent out my wedding invitations on the second weekend in July for an October wedding. And two, three days later, we found out that my stepdaughter, or she was going to be my stepdaughter, um, she was 11 years old and she was murdered on Long Island. Hmm. And my, for my hmm. husband to be, my fiance, um, he had been a police officer in the NYPD. And so he took it ex exceptionally hard because, you know, men especially go through this, I couldn't protect her thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and no matter where he would have been in the world, he would not have been able to protect her. When you have someone who is intentionally interested in killing another person, when you have malice in your heart, and that's what it is, it's malice, and when you go to harm somebody else intentionally, just because you can, really for no good reason, that is, in most places, second-degree murder or first-degree murder. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time, that he, it took us 18 years to solve that crime. Mm -hmm. We had three suspects, and each of them we couldn't prove any. We didn't have enough to prove it. So after 18 years, we get a whole nother set of eyes, the um, lieutenant in Nassau County homicide put two new detectives on the, on the case and the former detective had retired. So now we had new eyes and as a result it wasn't long before they were able to pick up this one person that they believed was the one who did it. Yeah. When they started to investigate him, it turned out that he had been a bad boy the rest of his life. Mm. He would um, abuse and beat up uh, other women that he dated along the way. He told each of them that if they didn't listen to him or do what he wanted, that he would kill them the way he killed his cousin. But Angela wasn't his cousin. And... Finally, they were able to arrest him. He was in L.A. at the time. And the um, Los Angeles homicide detectives, they picked him up, arrested him on charges of uh, um, har har harming his own daughter. He was accused of molestation of his own daughter. Oh, God. It was cr I know. Hmm. And so, we've got... We had to extradite him back to New York. He fought it. And we finally got him back into New York. And when we went to trial, it took another two years to go to that trial. And it took another entire month, the whole February of 2004, to have the trial. And to at the last Friday, he was convicted of... Well, he was convicted of second-degree murder, but the problem was, since he did this when he was 15 in New York State, he was considered a juvenile, so the most he could get was nine years to life instead of 25 years to life mm -hmm. if he had been one year more, if he had done this when he was 16. Mm -hmm. So he wound up spending 18 years in jail, which was a good thing, but he's been released just last month. Well, oh that's God. what we dealt with. But what I want to say right now is that too many people in our country have upped the violence quotient, and it's not good. 
We hear of babies being killed in their crib because somebody just takes a gun and, and you know, shoots all, shoots the whole street up. And the bullet goes through a window and it kills a little girl or a little baby. And this is like unbelievable. And it's, it's too, it's just, it's over the top now. And it's just not guns it's like I said it was it can be a knife it could be a rope it could be a drowning like Angela was drowned mm -hmm. um, intentionally drowned so she wouldn't say what he tried to do to her and families spend their whole lives trying to get justice you know some are even trying just to find their child or their you know parent you know, they're missing. They've been missing for decades. How do you live with that? It's it's the most um, horrific life that comes out of the action of one person, or a few maybe. But that life is so difficult because your whole life is spent on dealing with the case, getting justice, doing what you can. And it killed our marriage. Because that's all we ever did was worry about that. And what, one of the things that really pisses me off is that all these mayors of the different big cities, they're more worried about grabbing your guns that you are entitled to protect yourself with by the, you know, uh -huh. by the Constitution than they are of getting the the illegal guns off the street and out of the hands of the people who are pushing them, coming up from Mexico exactly. and God knows wherever else. Mm -hmm. I never hear them worrying about where are the illegal guns coming from. That really it is just beyond me. Mm -hmm. They want to steal your guns that you should have to protect yourself against these criminals. So that's a sore point for me. Yeah, it seems like so a double what standard. What I want you to know, I'm sorry. I, I, I ain't mean to cut you off, but it seems like a double standard. But like you said, guns yeah. that we have to protect ourselves, they want to take those away. But they're not right. worried about the illegal guns that's out there. Exactly. You know, so. Why is that? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Why is that? And what makes it even crazier is the people who live in those cities. They vote for those people again and again and again. And nothing's changing. But people are being murdered in the, in the streets near their home. Mm -hmm. So the only way it seems to me is, you got to get rid of those people who are not doing what needs to be done to keep the streets safe. Exactly. What, what's the agenda? There's something going on. There's got to be a big agenda for letting your city remain um, so unsafe. Mm. Chicago, Baltimore, Atlanta, New York, L.A. They're not doing anything. Mm. It's crazy. Okay, we'll get off of that. <laughs> no, no, no. no, you know what? <laughs> You're right. You're right. You know what? And and that's that's the truth. You know, it's like, hey, you know, if I have if I own a gun and I, it's here in my house, and you know, I'm protecting my family. You know, it's like I'm more or less. I can go to jail for killing someone in my house. That's you know, right. and that, it doesn't make that doesn't make any sense at all. But you know, it's just that that whole tipping point of what you made is so so true, and I believe in that. And you know, the thing is that you know we don't we don't really get into politics, but the thing is that right is right, you know, and yeah. you know it's not helping our bigger cities, and it's not helping you know people that are killing each other because. It seems For like whatever the only reason. Th yeah, the just just because they're in a gang and they have to prove themselves, you know, yeah. it's it, like craziness. And and there's so much gang violence right now. There's the MS-13 was on Long Island, and you know they they harm people and just so violently, you know. And, but, and you know, I I understand because. You know, I lived in Los Angeles, and you know, I, I've, I've ran across you know both sides, Bloods and Crips. You know, and you know, I, I believe me, I have a story for you that 
you know, I'll, I'll tell you off air, but, you know, I, I, you know, I understand what you're saying, you know, and my thing is that, you know, we definitely have to, uh, you know, do a better job and, you know, just, it has to be some, something, some kind of solution to this, you know, and, you know, like I said, you know, that, what you're saying is, is definitely true, and, you know, I've, You've told me the story about, you know, your situation with with your daughter and, you know, my condolences again. You know, I, I've, I've always given you my condolences and, yes. you know, during your situation and everything. Now, I wanted to ask you um, a, a little bit of a lighter question. Um, who do you have for the Super Bowl? <laughs> a little bit lighter Okay, I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. Who do you like in the Super Bowl? Well, I'm going to go with um, Kansas City. Kansas City. But David, David wants the, the Philly, and he wants Philly, as I m- mentioned before, because he was under the impression, like, the Phillies would win this, the, you know, yeah, the World, World Series, Series. And, yeah, and the Flyers would win in hockey. And so it would be like a whole bunch of teams all from the same community, you know, the same city. Yeah. And and he thought that would be really cool. Just yeah. the way it, they did in Tampa with the Bucks and the, and the light, is it the Lightning? The lightning, you're right. Light, you're right, right. The, yeah. the hockey and, and, you know, the Rays. The baseball so he really he he like he loved the fact that it was like a trifecta almost. yeah de- you know? definitely definitely <laughs> and how about you oh uh, I, I i gotta make the prediction next week i have to make it next week <laughs> only because yeah. only because next week is the uh super bowl show and right. super bowl right. podcast but right. you know i i I understand. I, 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 you know, you got a lot of Philadelphia fans in here, and you know that sure. listen to this, and you know that they're, they're gonna. They, they, I've been getting a lot of calls. I've been getting a lot of, <laughs> lot of calls this week about how you know, the, you know, the guru's always right on his picks, and his predictions, and everything. So you know, and you know, they thought that I, I made a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. So, but you know, Mary, you have to, you have to admit. I mean. <laughs> Mahomes is is hurt, okay? We don't know how much further he can really go, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, Philly is completely charged up to do this. <laughs> like, I, you know, there's a good chance they're going to make it just because they're so, they're so Wired. driven. <laughs> Wired. You know I mean? Wired they're up. so <laughs> driven. They're on fire. Yes, I they know. are. And, oh and they've, they've really come back from a lot of different things and so I give them a lot of credit yeah they, they played that this this has been a really good season for them but you know like I said you know you 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 touch on a lot of different things and you know I wanted to, I wanted to ask you you know with the little time we have left we you know Cindy Williams passed away this week and um I was just like gosh I can't believe that that's a part of my childhood. You know, and uh, yeah. it was just you know so sad. But you know, um, we I wanted you, we wanted to talk about Demar Hamlin and how things had changed because you know a lot of people are start you know when that happened, people were praying, and that's yes. one of the things that you know we we you know everybody was praying. How what is your thoughts on that? Okay, so just think about it. Every time you have a really horrific thing happen in your life, yeah. what's the first thing you say? You say, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Doesn't that, like, kind of resonate? Like, that comes out of you. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. And, and interestingly enough, think about it. He's the creator. He's your creator. Mm-hmm. You came from some place. I know people think about Darwin and everything, but really? I mean, that's, I don't know. Darwin didn't create us, and there's a lot of other religions where people, you know, they can't, they can't say that somebody didn't rise up, yeah. okay? Yeah. And, of course, it all has to do with what your faith is. 
You know, there's so many different types of faith all around the world, but the point is, is you have one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Better that you have a faith and believe in something bigger and greater than yourself. Yeah. And that day, that January 2nd, at night, mm-hmm. the football game was Monday Night Football with the Buffalo Bills, remember? Yeah. And that night, when he fell... And they had to resuscitate. It wasn't like, you know, oh, he hurt his leg and they carried him off the field. Mm-hmm. This was a man who had to be resuscitated back to life. Mm-hmm. And I don't I remember ever seeing that on football, and, you know, no. on a football game before. No. Have you? No. Um, there was a situation back in 1971 where a uh, player actually did die, but he, he died because of. He had some other complications or so on the football field. He played for the Detroit Lions. I can't, the name is escaping me right now. But it's okay. never happened before. This situation was something that we have never seen. And, you know, football players are trained to where if one man goes down, the next man got to step up and do, you know, do the job. Right. This was a situation where nobody thought, nobody could do the job because they have this was a red flag that that the NFL never saw before this is something that they never saw so it was just more or less you know I'm just glad that he's doing well I'm glad that you know it wasn't it wasn't a traumatic situation because I remember when I went to bed that night I was on vacation and um you know Ms. Guru had to have her uh, foot operate on the next day. <laughs> I'm so glad that I woke up the next day and didn't have to hear something to where it would affect me and put me in a, a little bit of a darker place. If that would have happened, I would have called you. I would have called you and said, hey, look, this happened and I'm really, really not, you know, it, it, stuff like that affects me. You know, oh yeah, it affects me. It too. affects me. It affects me a lot because because of the PTSD, and plus, you know, like I said, you know, with uh, you know the passing of Cindy Williams, that that kind of really affected me too. You know, but and it's just like, and that's just like when Kobe died over, yes. over three years, just three years now. Yeah, and I remember it was the beginning of my podcast. I had just started my podcast in two thousand and. Was it three? Yeah, 2019 in December. Okay. And like, I think it was like my 10th episode yeah. was on how do you deal with when someone in, you know, who's very popular dies or is sick? Yeah. And the first, the first, the three people I spoke of at that point was Alex Trebek had announced that he had pancreatic cancer and Rush Limbaugh, who's a conservative talk show host he said he had stage four lung cancer Mm -hmm. and which i knew he wouldn't recover from and neither of them and and then kobe had died all within like a matter of two weeks yeah i was like holy moses this is crazy and people were writing you know on twitter and facebook and everything and they can't believe how this happened and how i feel and it's it's logical for you to feel that it's it's I mean, you knew them in some capacity, Mm -hmm. okay? Like, you watched him play ball for years. You knew his family. You knew his teammates. You knew his injuries, you know? You -hmm. knew how much Kobe meant to you and how much he did for other people in the background. He was like, I called him his secret Santa. He used to go to hospitals, um... On the fly, people would call him up, his agent would say, oh, there's this child, she's in the hospital, you know, you're her biggest, she's your biggest fan, and, you know, do you think you could take, you know, go and visit with her and take her, you know, something, a ball or a Mm -hmm. jersey or something, Mm -hmm. and do you know he would do that? Yeah. Yeah. He would just get up and go on by himself. He'd never tell anybody, no press, no nothing. And he'd just show up and he'd go spend time with them. And it wasn't just like, oh, let me just sign this view. I mean, he was genuinely interested in making sure that that child was well. Mm-hmm. well you don't- and I love that about him. But you see, people don't 
don't talk about those things because we don't even know those things. Exactly. It's the same thing with you know former President Trump. He did, he did the same thing. One time, his his limousine broke down on the side of the road, and somebody didn't even know who he was at the time. This is long before he became president, mm -hmm. and somebody came and jumped his his vehicle for him. You know, mm -hmm. and the driver got the person's details and everything, and he was able to like at least get somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And that person never even knew who Donald Trump was. Mm -hmm. And later on, President Trump went back and paid his mortgage on his house. Wow, that's pretty. People cool. don't know these stories. Ex exactly. And so you know, exactly. and so there are plenty of people of wealth. And fame who do wonderful things and nobody is ever going to learn about it because they'd rather just do it because they want to do it not because of what fame is going to bring them mm -hmm. or promotion is going to bring them. Well, you know that's kind of good because the thing is that I like people that like you said do things not for the publicity just mm -hmm. doing it just for just for the hell of it and just say hey you know what I'm doing it because I just want to you know give back a little bit which is a good thing. Now, people that publicize it, you know, I don't have, I don't have no, no respect for. Because the thing about it is that they're looking for that valid, you know, that you know, validation. Yeah, validation to say, well, hey, you know, look, look at what I'm doing, you know, you know, stuff like that. That's why I wanted to be a baseball player because I wanted to do, I wanted to do stuff like that to where I can help people and you know, give back to you know, maybe my community, and, you know, like I said, if I was able to uh, become a professional baseball player, I was going to give back a lot of stuff to where I used to live at, and, you know, now the houses there are gone, and, you know, it's like, oh, wow. I was, I'm, was this? this is uh, South Wilmington, Delaware, and, okay. you know, like I said, I'm, you know, grew up in Baltimore, I grew up in Delaware, and I grew up in South South Ridge part of uh, Delaware, and um, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted, always wanted, always thought about doing that. You wanted to give back. Yeah, definitely wanted to give back. Well, I um, I did the, I did that in one respect back in the 1980s when we were doing support groups for other families of homicide victims, mm -hmm. and um, we there were a lot of kids who would come and sit on my lap when they, their parents would come to the support group that we started in New York City. And we also we also were part of a group on Long Island. And when that got so filled, we started something in the Bronx because it was just people coming from, like, upstate New York, Connecticut, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Delaware. They were driving all the way up, you know? Wow. Well, anyway... Um, at that time, these children were like sitting on my lap, hugging my neck, trying to be close to me because they didn't have the support services that they really needed because their parents were just so overwhelmed with everything, mm -hmm. you know, with the murder yeah. of like usually another child, one of their siblings, mm -hmm. okay, or a parent. Anyway, um, I got the idea one night and I thought, mm, yeah. I definitely have to do this. And when I get these kind of ideas, I always feel it's God telling me, work on this. Yeah. <laughs> so I started the Foundation for Grieving Children. And if you ever want to learn more about what we do to help um, young ones, what we do is we, all the donations that come in, we tally them together and we give them to organizations around the country who are helping children directly in support groups in their location and so instead of just you know getting a few donations we can send 5,000 3,000, 2,000 and it makes a difference so they can start a new program or they have the resources they need for the next you know part of their journey so Young ones need help. Teenagers need help, you know. And like I said, go to my website, marymac.info, and you'll find all kinds of organizations that are doing this great work. And um, also, www.foundationforgrievingchildren.org. And if you can give us a, sh a small donation or anything that you can, that would be just great. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is 
we have um, a Patreon account now um, for the Mary Mac show. And so you would go to that by um, www.patreon.com slash the Mary Mac show. And when you get there, you'll see that we're doing live streaming um, support groups now. We do a general bereavement group, but we also do a homicide group. And that's very important because there's really nothing like that out there. There are Facebook groups, but you can only do so much there, you know. But when you go to our streaming groups, um, they're a small investment every month, and it's the kind of group where you'll meet other people who are going through exactly what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And if you need that, you can find that on our Patreon account. Oh, wow. That is... That is so. That is something else. I wanted to tell you too because um, I definitely want to. You know, we'll we'll be talking, but I definitely want to make sure that I give a uh, donation to your uh, to your um, you the know, foundation. Yeah, definitely want to. That and would be nice. Thank I, you so I, much. I, I, I'm the guru has to do the right thing, and like I said, the guru is always trying to. Uh, you know, make sure that we take care of the people that take care of us. And I want everyone out here to know that, you know, you have been very, very, you know, very essential in my life and in Mrs. Guru life. And you've been basically a, uh, a, a, a beacon of light. And we really, really appreciate you. And I want you to know that, um, uh, like I said, the, the, the shirt that I'm wearing, the Guru, <laughs> the Guru Talking Sports Podcast uh, uh, hoodie will be uh, sent out your way as well. And, you know, like I said, we really, really appreciate you. And like I said, as long as I'm doing this podcast, you're always going to be mentioned in our closing. So I want Thank everyone you. to know that, Thank you know, you. this... I'm not just doing this just as a publicity stunt. This is not a publicity stunt. This is a true friendship because I see that you have always helped me, and I really appreciate that. And like I said, the uh, episode that you did make of uh, when you know Kobe and uh, Rush Limbaugh and everything, Alex Trebek, I listened to that. That was like one of the first episodes I ever listened to of your podcast and I want to say that every single episode is excellent and you learn something and to tell you the truth I'm going to have to start writing those five things down because <laughs> most of the time I, I don't get a chance to write the five things down because you know consumed with all the you know other stuff we're trying yeah well but, you could always you could always open your notes on your phone and speak it in every day exactly and, so, and now that i have a new phone i'll make sure that i will do that <laughs> i will do that, that. Would be great. but mary i want to tell you that i really really appreciate you and i've always always if you ever want to come back on this podcast you're always welcome you're Thank family. You, so you are family. You're, Thank you. You're my you're my podcast big sister, and I I love you for it. I love you for it. Oh, thank you so much. I'm it, so grateful this, to be with you. This was a, this was an episode that I will always remember and I will always cherish. I was on your podcast last year, yes. and I really appreciate yes. you know that. And I just want you to know that you know, hey. Um, you're, you're the best. You are the best. Thank and you so much. What I've heard here today, I hope that this part, this episode can, you know, stream out to everyone, and I hope that I can get a lot of response back for this because, like I said, this is uh, this is my, you know, this is uh, something that I really wanted to do, and I'm really glad that I, we finally got a chance to get it get it together and make sure that we got it together and you know I really really appreciate you 
Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. I've, I'm so grateful for our friendship and my best to you and Lynn, and we will talk again. Definitely. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little break, and then I'm going to you know, talk to my guests a little bit. And then I'm coming back, and I'm we're going to talk a little sports. But like I said, I want you guys to know that this is very important. So if you definitely got to get over to the Grief Authority website and subscribe, and make sure that you, you know, check her out. Check her out. Like I said, hey, look, I don't put anybody on the air just for the hell of it. Mary Mac is special, and she always be here for us. So, you know, you guys, and they can, and they can also go to www. Um, let's see, themarymacshow. com. There you go. And sometimes, when I have interviews with others, instead of me just teaching, um, you can go to my um, YouTube video yeah. um, channel, The Mary Mac Show, as well. All right. All right. Well, like I said, Mary, I really appreciate this. And, you know, we're, we're definitely going to do this soon. Well, I'll I tell you what, we can come, you can come on after the Super Bowl and, you know, rag me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how bad I did on my picks and all. Like, but no, I'm sure you're doing great. <laughs> nah, you, you know this a lot better than I. So. I try. But it I is going to be an interesting game. I have to say that. It, it's going to be really good. But like I said, I really, really appreciate it. And guys, like I said, hold on a second. We'll be right back. But um, I, I thank you, Mary. And, you know, we're, you know, always welcome. You're always welcome. Thank you. You're God welcome. bless. All right, guys. You guys hang loose. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Guru Talker Sports Podcast, episode 152. And we'll say goodbye to our very special guest, Miss Mary Mack. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. This is episode 152. And I want to say thank you to my very special guest, Miss Mary Mack. Just remember, the Mary Mack show is one of the best out there. And like I said, I wanted to bring her on and let you guys hear what, you know, from an expert and talk to you guys on what's going on and you know how to deal with things and like I said you know once again I do battle with PTSD and she helps me and one of my one of my favorite people in this world and I really really appreciate her time and I say thank you for uh, coming on and sharing that with us thank you thank you thank you again all right I do want to talk a little sports, and what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through a whole lot of stuff, but I know there's some of the bigger things in the world of sports kind of happened this week. Um, Tom Brady retired, and um, I want you guys to listen to this. Here's this, uh, this is what he had to say a couple days ago when he announced his retirement. Good morning guys, I'll get to the point right away. I'm retiring, they're good. I know the process uh, was a pretty big deal last time, so when I woke up this morning, I figured i just press record, let you guys know first, so I won't be long-winded. You only get one super emotional retirement essay, and I used mine up last year, so I uh, really thank you guys so much to every single one of you supported me, my family, my friends, my teammates, my competitors, I could go on forever, there's too many, um, thank you guys for allowing me to live my absolute dream, I would change the thing, I love you all. I believe him this time, do you? That's the question. A lot of people say this is, uh, yeah, you know, he was really shaken up at the at the be at the end of that, and um, I really think that he's done. But I will believe it when uh, he's not back on the field for the first game for Tampa Bay, 
or whoever he wanted to play for. I do think he's done. You know, when Dr. J retired, that was something special. When Kobe retired, that was something special. When Joe Montana hung him up, that was something special. Kareem. I can name you a lot, a lot of athletes that hung it up and it meant something to me. And, it, you know, it kind of made me kind of sad to see them go. But in this case, it really kind of, you know, it kind of hit me because Tom Brady meant a lot. And a lot of people hated him. A lot of people hated him and a lot of people do love him. I'm in the majority of, uh, I like to do. I really, really like to do. And I think that he's doing the right thing, you know, for himself. Because of all the BS that he went through, I think he needs a break. And I think he needs to really sit back and, uh, you know, take some time to himself. I hope he doesn't rush into uh, another 40-day 40, 40 uh, retirement. Because he did the same thing last year on the same date. And, um, you know, you see what happened. He came back, he played. He didn't have a bad, bad statistic year. It's just that Tampa Bay wasn't good at all. So, I understand where you're at, Tom. So, you know, if you do... If this is Sour and Hour, um, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your life, to tell you the truth. Um, but I'm still holding on to you in my fantasy team. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm letting you guys know I am holding on to him. Not unless uh, somebody want to make a trade for him. All right. Um, Kyrie Irving. Let's get to his dumbness again. Requested a trade. And guess what? Brooklyn sat his ass tonight. And you know what? I'm glad he did. I'm glad they did set his ass. And the, and the Nets actually won a game without Kyrie and with Kevin Durant still hurt. So, I'm glad that the uh, Nets did the right thing and did what they had to do. So, alright. So, like I said, I'm going to run through some of these sports uh, topics and uh, I'll let you guys, you know, give you guys some uh, my thoughts. Oh, also, I do have something for the guru is always right. Um, let me see. Let me see something right here quickly. Like I said, last week, uh, I made predictions. And, yeah, my predictions were right, like, again. And, well, let me see. Let me see. Here's more proof that the guru is always right. Voice actress lady, give it to me. And now, another reason why the guru is always right. Thank you, voice actress lady. Alright, now, I did make my predictions, and here was my predictions. I have them right here from last week. Well, the, probably the, uh, the Eagles are going to win this game because I got a feeling that they might end up hurting Brock Purdy. But, um, like I said, I'll take the Eagles, and they probably uh, blow them out, blow out the uh, San Francisco 49ers. I hate to say it, but, yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. And the second game, or the other game, I think that uh, Kansas City is going to find a way to win, only because uh, somebody might do something stupid and try to push uh, Patrick Mahomes out of bounds when he's already out of bounds. So I think that's what's going to happen. That's my prediction for the two games. The Eagles are going to win, and the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win. Later. All right, you heard it. So I was right. Guru's always right. <laughs> you know, you know when you're making these predictions, bold predictions and everything, Guru's always right. So, like I told you before, I'm always right. I'm always right. The guru is always right. All right. All right. So, um, 
I watched the NHL All Star Game. It was pretty good. Um, tell you the truth, I didn't find. I didn't. You know, it was it was a good game. I got to see. You know, some of the stars out there. You know, the Kachuk brothers was out there. You know, everything was all good. You know, it was it was a good good time for the NHL. You know, and like I said, that was that was really really good. Um, Atlantic Division won the championship or won. They beat the uh, Metro Stars uh, ten to six, and then you know, like when you play these All Star games, there ain't gonna be no defense or you know goalies. Goalie's going to get exposed and all. Ten goals, sixteen goals in that one game. Come on now, that was a, that was something else. So anyway, you know we had the NHL All Star Game, the uh, NFL Skills Competition to replace the uh, Pro Bowl is tomorrow. Um, definitely going to watch that. So you know we'll see what happens on that. All right, I tell you what, we're going to run down a little bit of the. Uh, some of these scores, uh, my man, Maryland, they crushed uh, Minnesota, eighty-one to forty-six. Wow, that was that was crazy. I didn't know Maryland didn't play that good. Anyway, they did all right. Maryland do all right. All right, um, Arizona won. Number five, Arizona beat uh, Oregon State. Uh, number nine, UCLA won. They beat uh, Washington State. Xavier won 96-71 over St. John's. Uh, who's that? Florida Atlantic. I told you about this team. Florida Atlantic wins again. This they won. They're number 19 in the country. Uh, that was a big game between uh, Texas and Kansas State. Texas came out on top, 69-66. Uh, number 10 right Texas over number 7 right, uh, what is that, Kansas State. Number 4 right Alabama. Alabama still putting it on people. 79-69. Uh, they beat somebody the other day by like 40 points. So, you know, Alabama's pretty good. Uh, Purdue, they lost. Yep, they lost to Indiana. 79-74. And guess what? Their Purdue is going to probably drop in the standings. So I'm not worried about uh, Maryland or anything. Uh, TCU lost. They lost to Oklahoma State. They were number 15. They're going to drop down. You know. Miami beat uh, Clemson. Uh, let me see. Who else? Uh, a very, very close game. Number two ranked Tennessee beat number 25 Auburn. 46 to 43. Really, really. If you took the under in that game, you won. All right. Georgetown loses again. They lost a UConn 68-62. I tell you, Georgetown, I, I don't know. I, I told you guys, Patrick Ewan's seat is on fire right now. And, you know, they won that one game, but still, they dropped another conference game. So, I don't know. His seat is uh, getting really, really hot right now. I know his his pants and fire, you know, fire is coming on. He, he, you know, he might get fired. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this up because, like I said, you know, we had a very, very good podcast with our very, very good special guests. And um, like I said, I really appreciate you guys. Now, I had a hell of a, hell of a week. I had a hell of a week. Um, another thing, too, is that I got a brand new phone. And I want to say, uh, I, I want to give a shout out to Joan. I want to give a shout out to Rob, Vernon, and Tina. All these people are great people up at the, uh, you know, the mall that I go to. And I really appreciate them for, uh, you know, helping me out and get me uh, situated with this new phone. Man, I'll tell you what. This new phone, I got this thing, and next thing you know, it's like I'm trying to, you know, get all my information, trying to get it switched over and everything. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So much work to do. I was up there for about two hours. But I'll tell you one thing. 
I got to give it up for Joan. She hooked me up. She took care of me. She got this thing together. And I was able to do this podcast today. And I told her, I said, hey, look, I will definitely mention you because I really appreciate anyone that helps the guru out. I really appreciate that. Like I told you guys before, I had these shirts. I had these hoodies. Last hoodie I'm giving out to is Ms. Mary Mack for coming on the program today. But um, like I said, you guys, if you want to try to get these hoodies, hey, you might have to start paying for them now. I'm sorry, but, you know, the free hoodies are gone. I gave away a lot of them. I you know, wanted to make sure that, you know, some of the people out there, you know, see this stuff. And um, everybody likes them. They, they look, they sharp. I, I tell you guys, they, these things are sharp. But anyway, you know, I got a couple. Of them. My man Dave May got one coming. I'm definitely going to have to hook up with him so I can give him his. Uh, Katie Guru doesn't want one. I'm not going to worry myself with him. Um, Ray Guru, I got one going to him. You know, Dante Guru, I got one going to him as well. So, you know, everybody in the crew is getting hooked up with him. So, like I said, I really appreciate this episode because uh, my very special guest, came on, and like I said, she's just amazing, she's just amazing, her, I, you know, really, really big props to her, Mary Mack, thank you once again, I thank all of you guys for listening, and like I said, you know how to find me, you know how to get in touch with the guru, guru's always right, he makes these crazy predictions, but they always turn out right, they're always gold. Go like you know the go. Anyway, I hey I got a few feedbacks on the rap last week, but like I said, I was just breaking out a little bit. I'm working on it. I'm probably gonna have it back. I'm gonna try to have it back for the Super Bowl, and I'm gonna rap for the you know brothers that are be in the studio with me. Katie Guru might be here, but I know that I have Dante Guru and all the other people be calling in, and like I said, I want you guys to call into the Guru Talking Sports Podcast hotline, and you can talk in, you can give me your prediction, a couple minutes on the line, because I'm going to have a whole bunch of people come up, calling up, I'm going to do this live, on air, I'm going to do this, make sure that everybody gets a chance to give me their predictions, I'm even going to let some Eagle fans come in here. So, you know, hey, Guru is, that's fair. You know, Guru is fair. I'm, I'm even going to let Eagle fans come on. I know what they're going to be doing, a little, little chant, and then we'll, it's a Philly thing, and E-A-G-L, I, I, I know all that stuff. I know, I had to deal with you guys, I had to deal with you guys for two weeks now. But anyway, like I said, Next week is the Super Bowl, and I will have uh, a little bit of a, I might go a little bit live right after the game. We'll see how that works, but like I said, you know, you guys stick stick around, stick with the guru, and, um, you know, we'll definitely have a good time, like I always do, but anyway, I want you guys to know that I really appreciate you guys for listening, you guys are awesome, you guys, you know, Got to check me out wherever. You know where to find me. The Guru of, uh, the Guru of Sports Show on YouTube. And like I said, every time this thing goes off, Guru, the podcast will be on there. Just check me out. Alright? Check me out. Alright, Facebook. Guru Daily Shorts on Facebook. The Guru Talking Sports Podcast underscore podcast on IG. That's Guru Talking Sports underscore podcast on IG. Gmail me at Guru Daily Shorts at gmail.com. You know where to find me always on Twitter. I'm at Mac M A C K G T S underscore BB39. Y'all know where to find me. Like I told you guys. Really appreciate you guys. 
big shouts and props to, like I said, Miss Mary Mack came on here. Really appreciate it. I, I cannot stress enough the importance of her message and the importance of what is going on out here. You guys, listen to the first part of this podcast because you will learn something. And like I said, I learned something. And like I said, it, I know when to be quiet. I know when to give my guest the floor and let her talk. And like I said, I wasn't going to interrupt. I have to do the right thing. Like I said, Miss Mary Mack is very, very special and very, very in, intelligent and informative. And like I said, I'm glad to have her here. My man Jeff Duarte, Cali Sports News, always appreciate you. I'm trying to get him back because, hey, hockey season is coming up. It's already here. You were already talked about the uh, hockey uh, all-star game. So, you know, we got to get some hockey talk up in here, too. Uh, basketball, uh, net, you know, Nets, Lakers, uh, uh, you know what the deal is. All right, the young GM, you got to check out my man, Curtis, my cousin Curtis and his grandson, Jared. The young GM, check out his podcast on Spotify, definitely. Big props to a man, Dave May Jr., the baseball insider. I might even have him, uh, you know, Zoom with us probably next weekend for the Super Bowl. Not take up a lot of his time, but, you know, I got to get his prediction in as well. Appreciate you, my man, Dave May Jr. My man, Danny Rivera, appreciate you always, my hip-hop brother. All right, Kane Gurus, our executive producer and board op, he ain't here, but, you know, he never is here. He might be here next week. We'll, we'll see. Ray Guru is the technical advisor, musical director. We appreciate you. Uh, Dante Guru is backup co-host and show advisor. Appreciate you, Dante Guru, for all you do. And also... Big props and shout outs to our our cousin Aaron. Rest in peace, my brother. We appreciate you. We miss you very, very much. Also, we want to say this has been a Black Goat production for Black Goat Sports. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. We don't hate. We congratulate. We always create. And we don't steal from anybody. Use the hashtag big props and the hashtag guru talking sports always. Appreciate you. You know, we're not going to do the hey song this, this week. I might do hey next week. But I want you guys to know that. We really appreciate you. And another thing to want to say. We always give the uh, last little bit of time for moment of silence for Cousin Aaron and now we're going to have to definitely give a moment of silence to the following Mr. Bobby Bethard who uh, actually constructed some of the greatest teams of all time including the 1972 undefeated Miami Dolphins he passed away this week Lisa Loring Lisa Loring was the uh, original Wednesday of the Adams family. We appreciate you and we miss you. Uh, Miss Annie Worshing. Now she was the uh, young lady in 24, if you remember that show. Cindy Williams, we always remember her from Laverne and Shirley. And now, uh, rest in peace to Cindy Williams. And also, one of my childhood uh, idols when I was growing up, Mr. Sal Bando, who was the uh, third baseman for the Amazing A's back in the day. The Oakland A's. Rest in peace, Sal Bando. Like I said, guys, this is this middle show before the Super Bowl. We'll be back next week with the Super Bowl show. And we're going to make sure that we give you a great, great show 
like always. You know what time it is. When it's that time, it's the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. We appreciate you. You guys enjoy the rest of your week, weekend, and or the rest of your sports weekend. And we appreciate you, and we'll see you here back here next week for episode 153 of the Guru Target Sports Podcast. Take care, and like I said, think about it. Think about what uh, the message was earlier in this podcast, and we really appreciate you. Like I said, we are we appreciate you. We we really care about you because the thing is, is that if you're going through things. You don't have to go through it alone. Get some help. Reach out. People will help you. You know, I do this podcast because I like it and I love doing what I do. But the thing about it is that, yeah, I, you know, I struggle sometimes. I try to turn to people that can help me. God bless you, Miss Mary Mack. God bless all of you guys. You guys come back here next week. We will see you soon. Take care. Our moment of silence is right now. Later.